For LandPost.com, I'm Michael Oleaga, and this is Turnouts, the political series featuring government leaders and national advocates discussing what's most important to the Latino voting bloc. The AFL-CIO, a federation of 57 unions and over 13 million members, has played a major role in workers' rights, and its president, Richard Trumka, has definitely led the way. Talking to Latin Post, he explained the importance of unions. You can look at it in a number of different ways. Uh, if you look at, uh, at every major battle for workers' rights, for civil rights, for voting rights, the labor movement has been at the vanguard of those fights. Uh, when we had the fight for immigration reform with a pathway to citizenship, we were at the forefront uh, of that fight. The fight for Black Lives Matter were in the forefront of that fight. When it comes to voting rights, getting voting rights for minorities and protecting them, we're at the forefront of, of mm -hmm. those rights. And we're also at the forefront of trying to raise wages uh, for all Americans, uh, whether they're in a union or not in a union. And when we say raising wages, it's not just the wages themselves. It's working conditions, it's health and safety, uh, it, it's scheduling, it's getting equal pay for women, it's correcting a, a broken immigration system that exploits people, it, it, it's about getting rid of a system that excludes a third of the black population uh, because of their, their status uh, where they were before and they can't get back into the job market. So we give voice uh, to the needs and aspirations of working people, whether they're in a union or not. First of all, we, we believe that you can't, in, you can't raise wages for Americans uh, unless the immigration system, the broken system, is broken and workers, 11 and a half million workers, get full rights on the job and off the job. Because here's what happens today, Michael. You, you have a, an undocumented worker. First of all, they're generally assigned to the dirtiest, most dangerous jobs. So they get injured and they get hurt more. Uh, that drives down the level of safety for, for everybody. Two, uh, whenever they speak up for themselves or they try to get uh, reclassified or get paid for work that they did and they're not getting paid for, they get uh, threatened. Uh, and, and that drives down the whole system for everybody. So that when we give full rights to undocumented workers in this country, uh, and we fix a broken immigration system, every worker, regardless of whether you came on the Mayflower or you came two weeks ago, is going to benefit because it's going to create a different type of society. And what's your view on the ongoing anti-Latino, anti-immigrant rhetoric being tossed around in this campaign right now? Yeah, I, 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 quite frankly, uh, I'm disgusted by it. I think it's un-American and I think it's racist. I think it has to end uh, whenever one of the major parties uh, allows that kind of debate to occur, it gives credibility to it and it deserves no credibility. It is un-American, it is racist, and it's not uh, accidental, it's intentional, it's dis aimed at demeaning and dividing workers, uh, white workers from, from people of color and saying they're the problem. Making any group of workers the scapegoats isn't the answer to America's problems. Mm -hmm. Us coming together to solve those problems on an equal footing. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I grew up the, the son uh, of immigrant parents and they made the same arguments against my parents and my grandparents. They tried to divide us, tried to separate us, and we were fortunate enough not to let that happen. And that really is the beauty of, of the labor movement. We do bring people together uh, from all different cultures, all different backgrounds, and we, we stand in unity because we're looking for a better life for us and for our kids, a better economy that works for everybody. And so I, I am disgusted, and I think it is, the America deserves better than to have one of the major political parties in this country have on the stage and them try to outdo or out macho each other to demean uh, a group of workers that have contributed mightily to this country, that have made this country greater than it was before, who continue to struggle every single day to make their family and their community uh, a better place to live. And so long as I have any ability, 
I will fight to stop that kind of racist, un-American activity. You know, the, this is, uh, right now we're in a fight for the, the direction and the soul and, and the heart of our country. What kind of country are we going to be? One that really does live up to the ideals that are below the statue of liberty and says we open our arms and we bring people together, that we help the poor, that we help people that are, that are more needy than us, that we give them the opportunity, that we teach them the fish instead of giving them just the fish. Uh, that's, that's what's at stake here. And I hope everybody can come together. I'm also very, very excited about the coming of the Pope. Uh, the Pope brings a message of inclusion, uh, a, a message of solidarity, a message of saying, judge us, judge us by what we do to the least of us, not by what we do to those at the very top. They've always done well, they always will, but how we treat those that are lesser, that are having a tough time. Uh, I'm excited about that because I think his visit is going to make a profound difference uh, in, in this country. I think it's going to let us create an economy that really does do better. It's going to make us more uh, inclusive. A and I actually think and I, I pray that it's going to have uh, a dampening effect uh, on, on the harshness and, and the discriminatory, demeaning uh, rhetoric that we're hearing by some of these uh, political candidates. Let's talk about the AFL-CIO. Tell me what kind of diversity um, occurs here that people, people might not know about. Right here at the AFL-CIO, probably uh, 75 to 80 percent of our department heads uh, are, are women or people of color. Uh, we have uh, diversity from the very top. Uh, at the very top we have uh, uh, our Secretary Treasurer is Liz Schuller, uh, a woman from the IBEW, and we have Tafari Gabre, uh, an immigrant, I might add, uh, who came to this country by walking uh, nearly a thousand miles to, to get to safety uh, and, and came here and ultimately ran. So he's the Executive Vice President. Uh, our office, if you look around, there isn't a single department that doesn't have diversity. Uh, from the bottom to the top, from uh, the maintenance staff to the legal staff, uh, there's absolute and complete diversity uh, in the building. Mm -hmm. And I'm extremely proud of that. And I think it's one of our greatest strengths. For more editions of Turnout, visit landpost.com. And don't forget to follow us online. I'm Michael Oleaga, and this has been Turnout.